hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is jibola and you are welcome to cutie's corner if you are just joining us what are you even waiting for click on the subscribe button below and join the gang and if you are a returning subscriber i love you guys as always today we'll be doing something very very exciting we're doing a story time actually i'll tell you guys i got admitted into medical school this has been a very long requesting video that i feel like i should do for you guys to see how i got into medical school i'm supposed to be talking about the process and everything how i landed in these trenches guys <laughs> so now let's go back to the beginning let's go back to how it all started guys this is going to make me have mixed feelings so you guys should just take it however it comes i just start off being a very bright student right from my gs class i was very smart in secondary school but i was just like i was not a first second third kind of girl i was just like in between sixth and seventh position in my primary school and then i went to my junior secondary school and in my junior secondary school guys that school i'm not even going to say much but that school can make somebody smart become a dollar. You wake up, you have to go far to fetch water. You know, all those stress, I really I really cannot cope with stress. I didn't even know I'm doing this medical school thing. I was 10. I entered, I entered um, secondary school very, very young. I entered, I think I was 10 years old, GS1. Just wash your uniform outside and you will not see it again. You know, that mental stress was was just putting me off i was like i'm not i'm not ready for this so i was really doing bad like would be like 40 something in class and i'll be like 20 26 out of 40 something and i'll go my mom would just be like sad that this girl what is this result what is this result in jesus name i did I, i'm not even going to sugarcoat things and tell you guys that i used to be a very bright i was not bright at all i'm this kind of person that i can really cope with when i have like extra attention yeah when the teacher gives me like extra attention when i have like a study group like an intimate thing you not know, like everybody they're teaching like 50 people in a class and expect me to i'm not even going to understand anything i say you know i was not good i'm not even gonna lie to you guys i wasn't even good at all and then my mom had to change my school in gss3 to another school so i went to a private school i was in a federal school before so i went to a private secondary school and that really helped me yeah i forgot <laughs> when i wanted to pick where to go which like if i when i wanted to pick because in nigeria like you have to decide if you want to go to the science class or if you want to go to art class or even commercial class you guys when, when it was time to pick i knew i was not good now what am i looking for in science class it's not my type they're looking for in science class so i already told my mom that okay mom art class and she was like okay it's cool art class no problem just go and be reading literature and enjoy life and then i called my dad and i was like okay daddy um, i want to go to art class my dad was like <laughs> your mates i'm going to say this to you but i will be a color and science class what are you looking for in art class like nigerian parents you people the pressure people put on ah uh, no Never again. My dad was so against us class, like good science class, doctor, 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 doctor. And me, I already knew that I didn't even have the capacity to do this doctor thing. But I, I even barely passed. So guys, I was so out. I cried. I remember I cried so much. I was like, I can't do this. I can't even I can't do this. I just have to go to art class because that's where I feel like I can cope. But my mom was like, okay, just give it a try, just try. People there don't have two heads, no those motivational distance. She shouted me all sorts of all sort of things and all of that. So SS1 came, I changed my school to a private school. And to my greatest surprise, when I got to the private school, it was a lot much better. Like the teacher student relationship was so close. Like I was close to the teachers. I could enter any teacher's office and tell them, okay, sir, so I don't understand this, I don't understand that. So the relationship was so nice, like there was no tension. I can't cope under tension. I used to be like that until you met him, built me to be able to cope under anything, any situation, guys. I can't cope. Even if there's fire burning, I will still reason. So apparently at that time, I could not cope with tension. I could not cope with so much stress. And the new school just brought it, like the old tension down, made me realize you don't have to go through so much tension to study, to read. I had friends 
Shalom if you are watching this. I love you so much. She was my best friend at that time. We used to read together. She was cool. It was, it was fun. When I started loving school, I started finding interest in school. I started doing so well. I was one of the smartest in my class as I then. I was like, wow. Is this how it is? And then the confidence came. The fact that I didn't want to disappoint the teachers that liked me so much. I was such a good girl, guys. I was such a good student. And everything was so well. I was good in chemistry. Chemistry was like my best subject. I really liked the teacher too. Like, why did I actually go for medicine? I would say um, I'm the kind of person that likes challenges. I saw medicine as the most challenging course at that time. And then I had a lot of medicine influence around me. Like I have a cousin that is a doctor now and he was a student then. I liked the way everything was. And then my mom, that woman, <laughs> was the, she was the orchestrator. She was the one that planned everything out. My mom was so into PSC nursing or medicine or nothing. That was, that was her aim. I don't know, maybe, maybe that was what she wanted to be in her former life that she could not become. But my mom was so keen on me being a nurse or being a doctor. So after that point, I was just there like, okay, this woman, she should just have a rest. Let me just do what she wants and, you know, everybody will be happy at last. She wanted me to study medicine and and I was good. I was good in biology. I was even taking for that matter at a point. I had to drop it because I was really confused about what I even really wanted to do. But I was not really the person that was good in math, physics and all of that. I was okay, but I was better in biology and chemistry. But that still wasn't like an indicator for me to study medicine. I just liked those topics and I liked the teachers that were taking them. And I really wanted to make them proud of me. You get, you get the point. So basically, it went on like that till it was time to take jump in Nigeria. You have to take your jump and your work if you want to get into a university. So it was time to take my jump and my work, and yeah, I needed to decide the university to go, and I needed to decide the course I wanted to go for. There was no two about it. my mom was all about the medicine, and even people in my school, teachers were like, "You have to do medicine because you're like smart." So medicine is the way, you know. In Nigeria, when you're smart, when you're doing well. You just have to be a doctor and god you don't have to be i can't decide to be a fashion designer <laughs> well that's by the way so in nigeria that's their mentality your teachers that's the way they think actually your teachers everybody wants you to be a doctor because they feel like you do well fast forward to jump i picked medicine i picked um oau as my first choice me and my best friend actually wanted to go to oau you know stay in the same apartment we wanted to stay together you know best goals all those things so we're already planning it oh you or nothing so i picked OU as my first choice and i picked lautech as my second choice until my mom's friend called and like there's this new school in ondo there's this new school that this is thing they will pick jibola those things and i'm just like okay okay my mom was like okay okay you can't change from lautech to unimed that's the school I'm in currently. So I went there, changed to Unimed, second choice, and OAU, that's IFE, as my first choice. So yeah, fast forward to we wrote Jam. Jam was great, work was good, and all of that, and it was time for us to get admission. Then we were waiting, and my sets, the lucky sets that did not write post -TME, so my set did not actually write post -TME. We just went for screenings and they just they just calculate aggregates they will use your jump and work and calculate the aggregates then if you meet up to the cut of mark or the cut of aggregate or something there's a way they calculate it then you'll be able to like study the course the like, particular aggregates for each courses so you'll be able to know where to go so that's how it was for us so we didn't write push gtme so there was nothing like push gtme for us so after i wrote my jam my jam was good my wife was good then the admission then for unimed i went for the screening for ife too i submitted and i think i went for the screening too was there ever a screening i can't remember now so when the result came out i was giving physiotherapy in ife and i was giving medicine here so it just made sense to come for medicine here my mom medicine or oh, she doesn't even want to hear physiotherapy what she doesn't even want to hear anything so i had to come to Ondo Unimed to study medicine and guys you don't even want to know the struggle that we're going through in this medical school that's going to be like another video on this when i was in under level i saw my classmates like as i then as i then in under level 
and I literally went home that day. I picked my phone. I called my mom. I was like, Mom, you know what? I can't do this. And she was like, ah, what do you mean? What do you mean you can't do it? You're strong. I know the daughter I have. You know, my mom is very dramatic. If she has been here, yeah, once or twice. My mom is the drama queen. She was like, you're strong. You can't do it. I was like, I can't do this. Have you seen people in my class? They start big book die. Where do I stand? Most of them are registered at home for like a while. So like, they know this stuff in and out. Me, immediately after um, secondary school, I just entered junior. Everything was just so soft for me. I didn't do any jam classes. I didn't do any extra lessons. I didn't do anything. I just came in direct, fresh. I was like, don't even stress yourself. Um, I can't. There's no way I'm going to survive this. There's no way I'm going to talk about how I got into medical school that I will not mention my mom because she was such a big part of the journey like she was there all through she was there motivating in every way financially gifts to motivate me and all of that like that woman is a gem I love you so much mommy if you are watching this video mwah, I love you you are the best thing that's ever happened to me I really thank God for the journey so far it has not been easy guys I cannot talk about my journey in medical school I not even cry like for real it's too emotional should I talk about the MBs? Should I talk about the exams that you read for so much and still fail? Mm? Mm. You start seeing scores like your shoe size. So guys, that was how I got into medical school. And I'm a medical student living and dwelling in Ondo State, in med, University of Medical Sciences, Ondo. That's the story, guys. If, if you enjoyed this story, please don't forget to subscribe like this video share to your friends and of course show me love guys i love you guys so much i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys